The collaboration between orthopedic and, and neurosurgery in spine care has gone back a long ways. Previously, the orthopedic surgeons were really good at one part of the spine procedure, and the neurosurgeons were really good at the other part of the spine procedure. So one would do their part and then step back while the other did their part. Over time, the surgeons would watch each other and learn how to do the other's part and simply shifted into their own domains, able to do the entire procedure, each of them on their own. More recently, the trend has been for complex procedures for the orthopedic surgeons and neurosurgeons, again, to start joining forces. There are only a few centers in the country who do this at a high level and even in the world, and we're proud at the Brigham to be one of those. So here at the Brigham, our Department of Neurosurgery and our Department of Orthopedic Surgery collaborate on complex spine surgery cases. What that means is we'll often see the patient and then see the patient either together or one of us will see the patient and then the other one of us will see the patient. We'll work together in conferences. Our conferences will be with orthopedic surgeons and neurosurgeons and often other specialists within the spectrum of spine care as well. And then the, the part we're most proud of as well is that we actually take this one step further so that in the operating room, orthopedic surgeons and neurosurgeons will frequently collaborate together on these very complex spine surgery cases. We've published our own research showing that this collaboration results in improved outcomes and decreased complications. It takes a lot of work, as Dr. Zaidi says as well, this takes a village, but we feel that it's completely worth it in the right, and that it's the right way to take care of patients. So our studies have shown that most institutions market themselves as multidisciplinary, but few offer the truly multidisciplinary care that the Brigham offers. We are very proud that we are able to coordinate across all disciplines of imaging, non-operative, and operative spine care. This collaboration runs in the outpatient setting as we collaborate with patients and work together and sometimes in the same actual physical setting to work with patients together. Um, this goes another step further to conferences. We have several multidisciplinary spine conferences to take care of spine patients with all different types of needs. And then finally, even in the operating room, we work together as a spine center to offer the best spine care possible. For us, it's all about first principles. What kind of care would you want for yourself or your family members? And what we do is we do everything we can to try to provide that level of care. We take care of some of the most complex patients out there with spine issues. This means patients who have very complex spine issues at baseline or other patients who have had multiple surgeries and need spine intervention to help them get to the next level in terms of their pain and function. By doing that, this allows us a very unique perspective so that when we see someone who has a more routine standard spine surgery condition, for example, they have a disc herniation in their neck and they need an artificial disc replacement or an anterior cervical discectomy infusion. We see that patient for, for what they are, but also for all the things that could happen in their future. And so we go into those procedures with a plan A, plan B, plan C, and we talk to the patient and work with them through all the different options possible in the short term, things that could happen in the long term. And we really understand that entire process because we take care of patients with you know, smaller conditions and very complex conditions. And that allows us to provide the best care possible. So adult degenerative scoliosis is one of the most common forms of scoliosis. And it's a result of the natural degenerative, age-related degenerative process gone awry. And that causes your spine to come out of balance. Um, a natural, normal spine is in perfect balance and a patient is not using much energy to stand or sit when their spine is in alignment. But as you get older and the discs begin to degenerate and the spine comes out of alignment um, and patient's head get either pitched forward or to one side or the other, that causes the spine to come out of alignment. And now patients are using much more energy to perform basic tasks. And that eventually fatigues the spine and causes pain. Um, it's actually fairly common. 60% of patients over the age of 60 will have some degree or some form of adult degenerative scoliosis. 
and the symptoms can vary. Uh, mild forms of adult degenerative scoliosis can result in mild chronic back pain. Extreme forms of it can result in severe nerve pinching and severe back and leg pain, and in some cases, weakness um, that uh, is incapacitating. Multifactorial, and it really takes a coordinated effort by multiple specialists, um, highly trained individuals that are specifically treating this fairly ubiquitous disease. Um, and it starts well before anybody ever considers surgery, because if you can catch this relatively early enough and treat this um, before um, the symptoms worsen, often many patients can't avoid surgery. And, um, and surgery may not necessarily be the right answer for many patients. Um, so initially we start off with patients working with physiatrists and physical therapists, building up their core musculature, helping support the muscles that support the spine to reduce um, the pain that patients experience and potentially even reduce the trajectory of the worsening of the curve. Um, and then we'll also have patients look at um, interventional pain management options, steroid injections, local trigger point injections, and that can help local pain um, and help patients exercise more, improve their exercise tolerance. Um, and then we'll have also patients look at rheumatologists, neurologists, psychologists even, to help look at ways of uh, treating medically uh, the symptoms of adult degenerative scoliosis. If those things fail, and, um, and some patients would want to consider surgery beyond that, if their pain is debilitating, uh, we can begin to talk about surgery. Surgery should always be the last resort. Um, and it's a conversation that we have with patients on multiple occasions um, because this really takes an entire village uh, to help patients recover from a procedure like this. And so we get to know not just the patient, but their, uh, their friends and their families and their significant others to help them recover potentially from a surgery like this. And then we also look at their medical side. You know, it really isn't just um, a one size fits all. Uh, we look at their uh, medical background, talk with their general practitioner, have them see additional specialists to make sure that they're safe for surgery, um, and meet with our anesthesiologist to also look at ways of optimizing the patient before they get into the operating room. Once they're in the operating room, um, it's a, uh, a symphony of multiple different um, uh, technicians uh, and uh, medical care professionals to help us make the surgery safer, um, starting with the anesthesiologists who are highly trained specifically for these type of surgeries, surgical techs who help us provide instrumentation in the operating room who are also specifically trained for these complex procedures. We have neurologists in the operating room looking at the function of the spinal cord while the patient's asleep. We have a variety of additional technology that help us place the instrumentation safer and quicker, reduce blood loss. And then um, after surgery is when really the journey really begins. Um, you know, it's a long road to a rehab because if you think about this process took decades to develop, patients are, all, uh, are uh, often um, deconditioned. And so it takes many, many years of recovery uh, to try and bring patients back to their original functional status and improve their quality of life.